Senator Baldwin. Thank you, and I want to thank our uh, chair and vice chair for this hearing and the opportunity to discuss the importance of biomedical research and what the Trump administration's actions will mean for scientists, for research institutions, and most importantly, for patients. The Trump administration has eliminated 222 active training grants, stripping away more than $180 million from research institutions in 37 states. These programs train undergraduate researchers, master's students, graduate students, postdoctoral scholars, and early career scientists as they transition to faculty positions. In total, the administration has canceled $5 million in grants for the Medical College of Wisconsin. And I would like to request uh, that a statement by the Medical College of Wisconsin be submitted for uh, the record. Without objection. Um, the administration has also canceled more than $10 million in grants to the University of Wisconsin. This means fewer jobs for Wisconsinites, fewer young scientists launching their careers at a time when the average age for receiving the first research project grant is already in the mid-40s. It means delaying research into life-saving cures and treatments. So I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Parikh and Dr. Sleckman, what are the long-term implications of these actions on the next generation of scientists, on research institutions, and on America's leadership in biomedical innovation. Senator Baldwin, thank you for that question. Um, it is, this is the thing that worries me the most. As I travel across the country, and in the last few weeks I've been across the country talking to institutions, and the, the, the concern, the angst amongst our early career scientists, and that's even pre-graduate school, that's undergraduates, is enormous. And it is the biggest worry I have because they are considering things I've never heard before. Some are saying, perhaps I should just choose something outside the sciences. And then those who are, have their goals set on curing cancer or curing Alzheimer's, they've started looking elsewhere. Not just foreign nationals, Americans born in this country. And there are examples of this, of, of them being recruited all from around the world. There's a recruitment from a, a university in France. I can't say the name because I, I can't speak French. But, uh, but there are real numbers there. 400 people applied. 136 of them or so are American citizens. We are going to lose talent in a way that we've never seen before. And industry needs that talent as well. This is not just about academics. This is about our industry, our GDP, and jobs. Yeah. Dr. Sackman. Yes, thank you, Senator. I, I would agree with that uh, uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, I think that uh, even before this, uh, there has been kind of this trail off of young trainees being interested in sci science. But what we've seen over the last several months has just accelerated that. Uh, and it's accelerated in a way that's kind of created this perfect storm where multiple factors have come together to lead to significant losses. Many universities and medical schools in, in this country have elected to, for example, cut the number of graduate students that they are having their first class by 50%, some even 75%. So those are people who will not enter graduate school this year and therefore will not enter the scientific workforce in 10 years. I'd also like to give an example which I find particularly disheartening and I think really uh, embolizes or, or, or emphasizes the situation that we're in right now. I have a very good colleague, a friend of mine, who is a researcher at the NCI. He works in my field. He is nothing short of brilliant. He is a member of the National Academy of Science. He is a member of the National Academy of Medicine. He has been doing research at the NCI on DNA damage response and genome stability for 30 years. He is now looking at positions in Europe and Canada. Is this what we want? Is this what we want for the next generation of researchers and for our current generation? Thank you. Mrs. Stenson, thank you so much for sharing your family story with us today. Um, we saw reports just last week that Alzheimer's disease patients may lose access to clinical trials due to the Trump administration's decision to halt $65 million in funding to Alzheimer's disease research centers. About a dozen of those centers are actually running out of their funding today. 
The Trump administration is also withholding $47 million from nine cancer centers across the country. And this funding was approved months ago. This isn't wasteful government spending. The Trump administration is putting real people's lives at risk. Meanwhile, they have fired more than 5,000 staff at the National Institutes for Health, which is delaying promising research on cancer immunotherapy uh, treatments like Charlie received. Mrs. Stenson, what would delays for promising cancer treatments mean for families like yours? It would mean we don't have other options to help our kids. And I know plenty of families who are waiting for new trials to come out. They're just sitting and waiting. And that is so miserable and devastating that they're waiting for more. And if the existing ones are getting cut, what are we going to do instead? Thank you.